have uh, we are play, uh, I mean I think we have a second speaker, uh, uh, Professor Diale. Please, Professor, uh, are you ready? In the meantime, Ali, you were saying you have some question to to all of us. I no no. I, it was a question for Stefan, so I'll wait to the discussion. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Thank, thank you that you don't talk now. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, prof, just give me one minute. Just give me one minute. Okay, Prof. Okay, yeah. I'm working with two computers. So the one that I'm working on will not be able to read stuff properly. Let me go back to the where you can see me. What, I, I, what I've done is that I saved in the wrong place. So now let me just save here. It's great, great. I'm then up. All right, I'm ready. Let okay. me uh, open my PowerPoint and share the screen. Yes. Okay. Uh, good morning, everyone. I'm going to share the screen now. Professor Diala, it would be great to see your face, if possible. <laughs> I'll try. I'll do that. Oh, okay. That's why I left another computer so that you can see me. Yeah, yeah. All yeah. Right. Uh, okay. I'm going to do that now. You want to see my face? Let me share the screen first. Let me go to Zoom and then share the screen. All right, this is me. Yes, this is me. Good morning, okay. everyone. I'm now going to share the screen. Nice to see you, Prof, again. Okay. We are privileged to have you. <laughs> uh, please, you have 20 minutes for the okay. presentation and five minutes for the interaction. So the, the okay. story is for you. you. Good morning, everyone. Um, I am the professor of physics at the University of Pretoria and the Sachi chair in clean and green energy. And uh, there was a little bit of confusion yesterday, but you know, if, when you have been a presenter for many years, it's very easy to go around circles. So I have this morning secretron radiation based X ray studies on energy storage. And today I'll speak a little bit about. Uh, batteries, which, uh, yeah. okay, the, thank you very much for inviting me. I really appreciate that, that I was invited to this meeting. It's, it's a privilege. Many people are not getting invitations. And then to continue about myself is that I like African collaborations. I, I always sweep uh, <laughs> funding to African countries because many people are scared to go to whatever, why, why do you go to Sudan? Why do you go to uh, Egypt, you know? I go everywhere, I, I'm not scared of anything. My people are great. So I'm very happy about the African Fiscal Society to be at this level, Wagi. You come from very far with this uh, work. It's nice that it's up to this level. And then I, I want to have a collaboration in every country in Africa. I can't speak French, remember, for those who speak French. <laughs> right, thank you. I will learn uh, you to speak French. I'll come, I'll come to Senegal, Wagi, but yeah. I forgot that you were there. So, but so next time I, I come. I will learn you to speak French. Yes, no, I want to speak Arabic. Also Arabic, why not? No, I want to keep away from certain uh, languages. 
Right, sustainable development goals. Uh, I want to remove this from my, must not uh, hide my stuff. According to the sustainable development goals, there are three important to us in this research, which are food, energy, and water. As if you have food, you don't need energy. As if when you have water, you don't need energy. But I remember when I was still in high school, in form two, you do what you call uh, the circles that uh, interact. And then when those circles interact, somewhere in the middle, you realize that you need each other. So food, water, and energy are very important in uh, the 17 millennium goals where they want to achieve zero hunger, clean water and sanitation, and affordable clean energy. That's why my work is in clean and green energy for sustainability. When we address the issues that are related to global energy crisis, you find that there is a problem with the energy mix that people are thinking about that what, what, when can we reach these goals of a, a, a good energy mix? Energy mix will mean that you have uh, renewables, you have natural gases, are you still going to have coal? Are you still going to have uh, nuclear and uh, all hydro? But I want to say to all of us, we need all these energy systems. We need hydro if you have water very close to you. When you are like me in an arid area where it's like a desert, we don't need water, we need solar panels. And then in some cases, like in Russia, nuclear energy has been well developed. Do we just take that development and throw it away? And uh, coal is still very important, especially in the Asian countries. When Western countries are saying that they are no more interested in coal, in Asia, it's going to grow. By 2040, people will be interested in coal in uh, uh, Asia. And we must say that whilst oil is deteriorating, uh, natural gas is a bit growing, but renewables are growing at a big rate of about 300,000. Uh, I mean, 300 uh, times of what you have now. So we need this energy mix. In South Africa, we say we will work with energy mix. So if you have, in your country an opportunity to engage this energy mix, it will work, nothing will be thrown out. It's just that we have to be careful about those that are contaminating the environment to the detriment of all of us. Some people think that we can just wake up in the morning and throw out oil. COVID-19 and the whole world lockdown showed us that we can all be grounded. Even the avi aviation industry was grounded. And during that time, that's when I discovered that people out there are doing a lot of research on hydrogen production in the view that in some few years, they will be able to replace this hydrogen. Uh, this, they, they will replace oil by hydrogen. And I'm looking forward to that because hydrogen is one of the cleanest energies to produce electricity. The only products that comes out of hydrogen are hydrogen combustion, are water and water. In the renewable energy mix, we have wide range of solar panels that are everywhere in the world and wind tunnels. And then we say the issue with solar energy is that it must be stored and some people are using wind tunnels. How do we store the solar energy we have seen? We can store solar energy by using the battery system or the hydrogen system. Why is it necessary for us to store? How are we going to store this energy? We need materials. The materials that makes us to have fully collect silicon. 
Let me start with silicon has evolved. We started with thin films and then monocrystalline, polycrystalline, but using all of that, we are able to produce excellent solar panels. So no material thus far has matched silicon in the collection of solar energy. The properties of silicon make it an ultimate material for solar energy collection. Then the problem with all this collection that has been achieved with silicon and many different ways of using silicon is that there is story. When the sun goes up, we have electricity. When the sun goes down, we have no electricity. We are in darkness. But then some people argue that um, the problem with silicon is the price is still very high. In 1977, it was $76 per watt. In 2015, it has gone down to 30. I always make a joke and say, how can sand be so expensive because silicon is just simple sand. It is not as simple as you say it. It has to go to the laboratory to be processed in such a way that it can be used in devices. According to National Renewable Energy, there are other materials that can compete with silicon. If you look at this picture, there are many different materials like CIGS, CZTS, and even perovskite, gallium arsenides, many other different materials. So new materials need to match silicon properties. How are they going to achieve that? I think using advanced technologies such as synchrotons may crack the silicon code to make solar energy cheaper. So the problem then becomes this. Synchrotons are not easily available to everybody. But then now recently the policies of different governments has allowed the availability of synchron facilities so that people can do new ground breaking research and evaluate the old results. Many different countries that have got synchrotons and we in South Africa have got a very good relationship with the ES. RF, the synchrotron, European synchrotron facility at Grenoble, where you can make an appointment and go and do research. But also many other places, like in Germany, DESI, in the UK, Diamond, and in the U USA, we, you can book a space at uh, the, the other, like uh, all the other uh, available synchron facilities, but you need to collaborate with other people in those areas so that you are able to come up with nice research, which is multidisciplinary. The conventional laboratory techniques such as XPS, where you use photoelectrons and then you still use the focus beam, and then you still capture the picture are not as best as the synchrotron facilities, which we are trying to say here in Africa, we want to have a synchrotron facility that will be um, available to all of us. And in solving the problems that are in Africa, the major problem that are you know that without energy, it becomes extremely difficult. Think about this digital age where all the uh, information that you are getting is reliant on your charged devices, charged batteries. So we need advanced techniques to, um, ex to work on these materials in such a way that we come up with new results that are um, publishable, like one of the uh, presenters at yesterday's conference saying that pub have publishable results. I must say what I have discovered is that there is so much great research that is done in Africa that is not published because people do not have facilities. So I think the 
collaboration with synchrotrons worldwide will help, help us a lot. Let's have a look at what is synchrotron radiation. I like writing these sentences because for a student, it is actually very important. Synchrotron radiation is emitted by charged particles traveling at speeds relative to the speed of light when accelerated by magnetic fields. If we go to the lower uh, to understand this world, remember your electromagnetic experiment where you were using the solenoid and the magnet to create electricity and vice versa. The major advantages of synchrotron radiation include very high intensity, which will not find in your normal XPS or XRD, tunable energy range, and linear polarization. However, we have spoken about the problem of not finding the uh, synchrotron radiation facilities easily, but please collaborate. The availability of synchrotron radiation with its characteristics of high brilliance, brilliance is like very bright, particular collimination, collimation and multi-wavelength accessibility continues to drive technical and theoretical advances in scattering and spectroscopic techniques. Whenever you are doing any experimental work, try to match your experimental work with theoretical work. In my work where we are doing hydrogen production using hematite, we have mixed the techniques. We have worked with the theoretical work and then we have also worked with experimental work and we are able to report very good papers because we are able to compare the two. An exciting area being developed in the exploitation of these advances in synchrotron radiation surfaces and bulk probe techniques to study the underpinning issues in materials, which according to me, that will be able to help the problems that we are seeing in silicon. What is there that is in silicon, which we cannot crack so that we can use silicon in uh, uh, radiation facilities, uh, in, in, in uh, electrochemical uh, uh, devices. Electrochemical mechanisms are like a Dyson cytosine solar cell where you use the dye, you put devices using some semiconductors and materials and you come up with some solar cell. And then the photocatalytic electrochemical cell is the one that we use to produce hydrogen, the function, uh, the produce hydrogen. We speak about taking a semiconductor, which is a photosensitizer or a metal, immerse it in an electrolytic solution and cause a direct chemical reaction to produce an example of hydrogen via electrolysis of water. The function of this photoelectrochemical cell is similarly like that of converting your photovoltaic effect or photoelectric effect when sunlight, which is an electromagnetic radiation, shines on a material and you produce and hydrogen also is an electrical power. So hydrogen can be bent to create electrical power. The first technique that I want to just highlight here is wide range X-ray scattering technique, which has got an ability, a great ability to probe many different crystallographic planes uh, together resulting in a fast and rich data acquisition. And uh, this picture here shows your X-ray beam at the synchrotron source, and then the fraction patterns that are created at the two theta angle, which is about 0.3 to 0.3 angstrom. The use of high energy, sometimes referred to at half X-rays, is advantageous because these X-rays are not absorbed well in a solid material and therefore allow deeper penetration. A case of lithium ion batteries, or I think I've, I've skipped, uh, okay, yes, using this white 
We have a case of lithium ion batteries, which I think people will be interested in because batteries are a storage. In situ, XRD investigations performed on micrometer size lithium ion uh, phosphate shows the emergence of a metastable crystalline phase with an intermediate lithium composition of 0.75 to 0.6 to 0.75 when cycled at high rates. Whereas studies on nanometer scaled lithium ion phosphate particles are limited to low and moderate current rates, only deviations in stoichiometric stoichiometry from these two were observed during uh, the experiment. The results that you see on the left shows the variation. The picture here shows, oh my. So, uh, sorry, you have five minutes. All right. The picture that you see here shows the XRD patterns of the galvanistic charge and discharge rates at 10 columns. So uh, this here shows your intensities, and here is the maps of that up and down of charge and discharge. All right, the next one, a case study using small X-ray uh, uh, scattering. In this example, small X, small XF is a technique to study material structures at small angles or large distances, which can be used for issues that are related to size, shape, and structure, and relative position of the particle. That can be um, applied very well in nanostructures. So in this place here, you have a color-coded projection maps during which in situ uh, experiments with corresponding voltage profiles uh, are presented here. I will leave the slides with the, 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 the organizers as people were asking for them yesterday. So um, in addition to all of that, we have absorption techniques, which includes uh, XAF, X-A-N-E-S, E-S-X-A-N-E-S. And all of them are so important because they provide the uh, desired electron transitions. So when samples are exposed to X-rays, it absorbs part of incoming photobeams. And then you are able to see fluorescence, production of unbound electrons, and of course, scattering. Uh, experiments. All right, this I'm just repeating for those who are not here yesterday. My favorite is hydrogen fuel. And I'm working on producing hydrogen using a material called hematite. Hydrogen is already used in many places for transport. Like here, you, you can see that uh, there's a car, the hydrogen stations where we are saying that Japan is topping the whole world with more than 90 hydrogen fuel stations. That's why Japan is selling all its cars to Africa, you know? We must be careful about this. And in Germany, which is the next one, it has got more than 670, and we continue to grow. So we are on our way up with the hydrogen production. So what is that that we require to produce hydrogen is that we use semiconductors where our semiconductors must have suitable band gap and uh, suitable band position, low over potentials, efficient charge transport and stability. And uh, all of this, we are looking at hematite as a stable material inside water, which can be used to make a device called photoelectrochemical cell so that we can split water into hydrogen and oxygen. And in that work of splitting water between hydrogen and oxygen using hematite, we are struggling with some uh, issues with hematite. The first that we are getting very well is that that the advantages of hematite is that it has got this band gap, 
which can capture up to 40% of the solar energy. It is relatively abundant. If you are traveling around Arizona, you'll see this red soils everywhere. Even here in Africa, we have got lots of places that have got red soils. That is your hematite. It is chemically stable in water and it has got the right bent position. But the disadvantages of this material is that it is a poor conductor of electricity. It has got short lifetime of excited uh, careers and it has got short cold diffusion length. So how do we solve this problem? Solve them by nanostructuring, doping, heterostructures, core, and is using co-catalyst and plasmonic enhancement using uh, metals. So I'm trying to run quick. Give me some two more minutes. In okay. our lab, we yeah. have achieved many different uh, structures. Uh, of nanostructure, which we have not given our colleagues in Switzerland our materials to go and uh, 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 do experiments for us. That's the power of collaboration. And then we're able to do some impedance measurements where we're able to tell that uh, using certain types of uh, techniques to make your hematite at certain temperatures, you are able to produce a higher photocurrent. Our work is on devices and with devices, all that we are trying to do is to see if we can produce a device that will give us a higher photocurrent. You can read this paper which we have published. And then we have also done the structural and optical properties where we proved that you can only anneal up to 750 degrees Celsius, because if you go beyond that, then the materials start developing traps, which will trap your electrons and affect your current transport mechanisms. Okay, so uh, the photocurrent that was improved, was improved by effect of 5.3 at 1.23 volts versus your RHE and uh, at 750 degrees Celsius and got this cathodic shift of 300 millivolts. All right, let me quickly go through and then uh, let me see. We have published this paper, which you can read with my student, uh, Panan Kies Man. And then these are the heritage rejection uh, results. And then let me quickly go to this list of publications. We have got this long list of publications, uh, up to 10 thus far, with uh, uh, theoretical publications by Jason Fugwe and uh, experimental publications by Ma Bong, Kiesman, and Justin Yarige. And all this work is being cited in. Uh, new articles that we are seeing these days. So in summary, I want to say that we need to store our electricity from the sun, which we are able to use during the day, but using both batteries, lithium ion batteries, doping them differently, and hematite doping it differently, you are able to produce a very good device for a storage of solar using this kind of uh, devices. I want to acknowledge my university, University of Pretoria, the National Research Foundation, and the private organization called Mutsipe Foundation. You know, it's our billionaire in South Africa who is into social uh, helping people out there. Uh, I give thanks to all of them for doing this to me. Thank you very much for listening. Okay, thank, thank you. you very much. Thank you very much, Prof. Uh, I think we are uh, going to have interaction with Prof uh, at, at the end of uh, actually with uh, the total interaction. So we are going to move to the next speaker. But before going, the, uh, I mean, uh, the next speaker is uh, Steve Nidenge. Please uh, prepare your slides. But in the meantime, Prof, about the collaborations 
how young African scientists are going to use your facility? Is there any way that they can do? Uh, it would be nice if you comment along that line. And also, when do you think to have uh, African synchrotron uh, and where? <laughs> That's a nice question. I think I would like to have it in South Africa. It's me, okay? It's not the uh, committee. Uh, Ma Madam, right. Madam, we see you as an African, not only a South African. Great, I'm happy. Thank you. Um, collaborations. I collaborate with a professor. Uh, I, I collaborate with Ethiopia, let me mention countries, and then I collaborate with Senegal, I collaborate with Zambia, I collaborate with Uganda, I collaborate with Kenya, I collaborate with Tanzania, I collaborate with Egypt. And I'm still looking for more collaborations. This is how I do my collaborations. The student must be registered in a home university because we are avoiding this brain drain and also short circuiting the, it's me, it's my style, short circuiting the master's degree supervisor in the home country. He has the, the master's degree supervisor has done a good job in preparing the student. So I would like to see the master's degree supervisor continue to, uh, to benefit. So what I am saying is that let the master's degree supervisor, let the, the student come through education via the master's degree supervisor so that uh, the, 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 and then he can spend some time in my lab provided we are doing same things. I'm doing perovskite solar cells. I'm doing um, hematite uh, nanoparticles. But there are other materials that you can use. My lab has got all the device preparation. So please, uh, only questions with supervisors, not with students. So students, don't contact me. Only your, your, your supervisor can contact me because I want to protect my colleagues. All Thank right. you. Well, well noted, Prof. Uh, thank you.